but, but context always drives that choice. I mean, the preponderant usage, That's what of, I'm saying. The preponderant usage of day, though, is ordinary day, right? Its main meaning is day. Its primary meaning is ordinary day. Yeah, our primary meaning. So, but you've got to get God's primary meaning well, and Moses, who wrote the biblical yeah, text. Yeah, and, and yes. I mean, if you, yeah. if you look at any Hebrew lexicon, will show you an ordinary day, or a daylight portion of a day, and so on, is the preponderant usage of day. No, I but don't there think it does show that. Uh, that. That's the issue that it doesn't show. It doesn't show that in every case it must be uh, no, I'm 24 not saying, hours. I'm certainly not saying in every case. I mean, the word day is used a number of different ways. For instance, in Genesis 2.4, as it is in 2.17, yeah. as it is in 1 Kings 2, yeah. uh, it's talking about exactly. when, as you know, because it's bayom. It's got the, the preposition yeah. there. Right on. But, but that qualifies it, right? And, I mean, you wrote about that in the Hard Sayings book yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, concerning uh, Genesis 2.17. But... Um, in Genesis 1, the day doesn't have the preposition uh, for the first day, uh, so it's not, it's not bayom as it is, it is there in, in 2 verse 4, but it has the same formula for day 1, day 2, day 3. What, what do you mean the creation starts on day 4? I don't understand what you're saying. God took the greater light and the lesser light mm -hmm. and put them in, made them, mm -hmm. in order to set aside years and mm -hmm. seasons mm -hmm. and times and days. Mm -hmm. Day starts on the uh, fourth day. Well, so you got three of these, whatchamacallits, before you have one of the 24-hour ones. Now, let me ask you a question. Yeah. I, I thought when we, get, when we start from Scripture, we should start from the text. Now, not a problem we've got with the sun or the moon or the stars. We start from the text. If you just take the day as written for day one, day two, day three, it's the same as for day four, and you've got light on day one, you're just not told where it came from, what is the problem? Uh, the problem is that uh, you're starting with a presumption. I have a 24-hour day in mind. Now I'm going to start with, since it uses the word day on one, day on two, day on three, that all of those are 24 hours. Ken, you can't do that. That's not, you, that's you not my, pre, you know what my presupposition is? My yeah. presupposition is I'm going to go to the best Hebraist that I know of, like Dr. Stephen Boyd from uh, Master's uh, uh, College, uh, who, who I talked to just this week, actually, yeah. out there in California. He says the word day, the word yom, and uh, I mean, he's a, he's a respected Hebrew scholar, the word day, for each of the six days, uh, when it's used with evening, morning number like that, he said, of course, it means an ordinary day. And he said, I agree with Kohler Baumgartner. I agree with Brown Driver Briggs. Yeah. Well, that's all good and well, but when I went to uh, a university, we got scripts that had not yet been uh, translated and had not yet been deciphered. And we wrote uh, grammars and we wrote uh, lexicons and uh, dictionaries mm -hmm. for them. And the rule always was Context decides you have to have Absolutely. enough examples of context, and you don't go backwards and say, what does the lexicon mean, and then assign that. That's using a kind of academic poke. Rather, what you do is you go to the text, and you say, where do scriptures say that God made days? Uh, the kind we're really interested in. And we're all agreeing that it was on the fourth day. Uh, haven't the Hebraists done that, who wrote the lexicons? Isn't that what they did? Look at the contextual usage and so on, and uh, come up with that. And by the way, why is it? You know, it's interesting. When you even, uh, when you even look at Gleason Archer, and you look at the, the late um, uh, Dr. James Montgomery Boyce, and you look at Paddle Palm from, um, from Wheaton College, even look at uh, Bruce Walke, all of those agree, and I've got the quotes here, that if you just take it, they, they say, you know, as written, straightforward way, or Gleason Archer says, you know, use the word superficial, whatever, you just read it, 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 it seems to say, in, in Hebrew, 24-hour days. But they all go on to say, but no, because of billions of years. It's interesting that I found out ever since uh, the, the uh, 18th uh, century, what you find is a change in the commentaries where they started reinterpreting the days because of billions of years. So there's something outside of Scripture here that's really driving their interpretation. That, that's not really <laughs> true, uh, Ken. I oh, mean, yes, it is. Here, I've got a re this is a review paper by Jack Lewis, a noted historian. And he makes the comment, our survey shows that Bible readers have never been of one mind concerning the nature and the length of the days of Genesis. Well, I'm just going to have to totally disagree and say, hey, come up with the documentation. I've got some documentation here. Well, how about Isaac Newton? That's so, 16th, 17th century. What, what about Calvin? What about Luther? What about Wesley? What about Leupold? What about uh, Keelan DeLich? I mean, all, all, all the classic people that you think of, all 24-hour days, and the majority of the majority of the church fathers. In fact, most of them. Well, we disagree in, on that. Believed I mean, in thousands of years. That's why I quoted Jack Lewis. He's a neutral party. He's done the study. He's a historian, and he says they were never well, of one there's, mind. There's many. Uh, hey, I, all I can tell you is 
we can look through the documentation. One thing to say these things, you 